Oh, I believe that we will see more foreclosures, and I think personally that 2011 will be the greatest foreclosure year. It will surpass 2010. You know, even though that seems almost impossible, I believe it will surpass 2010. There's an overhang of about 700,000 bank properties that are not yet on the market. Consider that the unsold market right now is over 4 million. That's way more than an entire year's worth of inventory out there. So we've got a lot to go before this housing crisis gets better. Foreclosures, staggering, almost 2.9 million in 2010. That is up 2% from 2009, up 23% from 2008. And as you just heard there, 2011 uh, promises, unfortunately, to be a bigger year for foreclosures. What about this and the economy? We're back, we're back with the panel. Uh, Jonah, uh, what does this tell us about what's ahead? It tells us that 2011 is going to be a very rough year because the only way you sort of really get through this is if you get the unemployment rate down. And one of the ways you get the unemployment rate down is to get the housing industry back. There's a real nasty catch-22 to it. And at the end of the day, it seems that the only way you get through this is you just have to purge out the bad properties, the bad mortgages, and all of the rest. One of the reasons why... Um, uh, next year is going to be worse than this year, 2011 is going to be worse than 2010, is because of the freeze in all of the uh, foreclosures that we had because of this robocalling scandal and all of the rest. So they're all going to get pushed into 2011, and we just got to get the poison out of the system. Well, and banks are holding a lot of properties. They're not even all in the market yet. Right. Well, some of it's still uh, in legal tangle because the courts have to make a decision as to what's legally held and what's not legally held. But the Jonas point is exactly right. You got to clear out this distressed inventory and then move forward. And the, the the trick here is, as you move forward, to have consumers and the banks find some semblance of balance that the banks believe in the consumer's ability to pay and, and set reasonable terms for mortgages and for equity loans and that the consumers actually have the capacity to pay and the people that I, I hold so guilty in all of this the rating agencies actually perform their function so the calls we saw before the election largely we we predicted tied to the election for foreclosures to continue to be frozen and for the effort to stop foreclosures, they, right. they'll come to an end. No, that has stopped. You know, and, that, and that was a response, by the way, from the administration to conservative calls to say, uh, this is un, un, ex, there's no excuse for this kind of interference in the market and it will slow our economic recovery. Charles. Look, it's an ironic and a sad fact, but the lower the prices go, the sooner they hit bottom. And the sooner the market will clear, the sooner we're going to be able to actually rebuild. You know, the administration, out of a humane impulse, had a program called HAMP, which was supposed to help those who were going to lose their houses. But unfortunately, it's been a, uh, it has not been successful. The, the, the projections in mid-year were that three out of every four people who were on this HAMP assistance would end up losing the house anyway. Uh, and it's a way of slowing down the market. I think the, the, the boil has to be lanced. It's going to happen in 2011, and I think it'll allow a recovery afterwards. But, you know, if, if, you're, if you're losing a house and the family's going to suffer, it's no consolation that economically it's necessary. Well, especially because so many Americans put their value, their wealth, mm -hmm. into their home, Jonah. Yeah, no, uh, the, the psychological role of housing is just enormous, and there's an argument that the housing market is still overvalued. I would say that, uh, getting on to the politics of this, that it does tee up very nicely for the Republicans uh, ser a series of very important hearings on reforming Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are essentially uh, insolvent if it weren't for the $150 billion bailout, and they have $5 trillion of mortgages on their books. Their common shares of stocks have dropped 99% in value, and... Uh, that was a direct result of policies, at least I would argue, that came uh, over the last few years led by Democrats. And that, ne that argument needs to be had. It kind of has not happened, happened in a proper way yet. Congressman Issa is going to be leading one investigation.